Good afternoon. Welcome to the In Results podcast. We're certainly moving forward very quickly. Today is March the 26th. We are three days away from more of the COVID lockdown rules being relaxed. However, Alistair, we're reaching quite a critical point, which we always thought would come. And the care system now is on about making vaccines mandatory. What's your opinion on that? Uh, it's, it's a tough one, Ben. I mean, you know, I... I was I've been quite surprised at the resistance in certain communities and and certain age groups and um, you know most most people I know have as soon as they've had the opportunity they've been going with a hop skip and a jump to the vaccination centres and they've been getting their jabs and feeling pretty good about it and um, so it it comes as a bit of a surprise when you then find that there are there's quite a lot of resistance to it. And actually it does throw up um, a, lot of, a lot of arguments for and against uh, comp compulsory requiring, compulsory requiring uh, people to vaccinate. Um, you know, it's, 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 um, it's, the, it's, it's somebody's own body after all and their own mind and their own philosophical beliefs. But how do you then balance that with the wider needs of society or what interests us really is what's the employer's rights and responsibilities um if you're a care home manager or owner if you're if you have a domiciliary care business if you have a country pub and your clientele that, that, that have been locked down for a year but if the average age of your regular drinkers is 50 plus uh, and like my local, where we lost a, a, a we lost a regular before Christmas uh, to COVID, um, you know where do you stand as an employer? And it's interesting to see just this week um, uh, uh, Boris Johnson getting into a bit of hot water and a, some flack for suggesting that pub landlords might want to exclude people that don't have a uh don't have evidence of, of being vaccinated and uh, it's 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 really is a, it's a it's an interesting one i mean let's not forget pubs are not just pubs that we like to go to pubs are places of work and um i know that you know, my, my own local um most of the staff uh got um covid uh in, in the autumn as as uh, as it came racing back came came into Telford and Rekin to levels that were never there in, in the height of the earlier lockdown. They hadn't reached those levels, nothing like it. And, um, you know, I can imagine that a landlord like I as was of a, a, a pub, I can think that he would feel quite strongly that people should feel safe because, um, you know, we, we've all got our anxieties. So, yeah, it's a tough one, Ben, I th but I can see it from an employer's perspective. And I think that the reality is, Employers will want to encourage staff, but making it compulsory is a difficult one for existing staff, especially those that have had to work and continue to work over the last year without vaccination. It's a, Getting vaccinated affects different age groups at different times, but I know that there are certainly a lot of employers now in the care sector who are making it a contractual requirement for new starters at least. And we've been asked to draft clauses in that regard, um, so that, um, that that's that's their view. And I think it's quite an industry-wide um, perception that that's the right thing to do at the moment. Um, make your make your employment decisions based on that. Now, whether that indirectly discriminates against people's religious beliefs, for example, I, I think it's this is this is why government legislation might be on the cards because people's competing rights need to be aired and discussed uh, and not not trampled on um, but employers need certainty and I think that's the, where we're at there's a very useful ACAS guide that came out in recent weeks and I would recommend people have a look employers have a look at it but um, you know it, it does give some good practical advice um, but to actually go a step further and insist on it and base your recruitment requirements on it, um, you're going to discriminate against somebody, whether it's because of their age, uh, their pregnancy, their uh, religious beliefs. 
other philosophical beliefs that might be covered by the Equality Act, um, you know, there, there's going to be trouble afoot <laughs> uh, down the line. So I think we, we do need government intervention uh, for some clarity, uh, rather than have the uncertainty of, um, of case law establishing um, what might be reasonable down the line. It is there two sides to this? Is there a legal argument and a moral argument? Yeah, I think the two are very closely linked, to be a frank, Ben. Yeah, there is. Yeah. I think this I think this is certainly a case, as you always say, you'd rather see a test case than be involved in the first one, wouldn't you? Amir? Oh, Ben, I've said it before, and absolutely right. I would feel I would feel much happier fighting the corner for a company whose business is in care in one form, shape or other, whether it's domiciliary care, whether it's care homes, you know, we're dealing with vulnerable people, every age group, everybody gets old. Um, this COVID is going to be living with us now like flu has um, for, 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 for so long. Um, different strains are going to come along. We're seeing it already. Um, there will be years, there will be winters where maybe uh, last year's vaccination isn't as effective and it's going to make people very poorly. Um, so I think that I would be happier with fighting the corner for employers who are in the care sector. But I think that employers generally, if they're sending staff out to other people's homes, like your Pimlico plumber chap, who's very spoke, outspoken about it and has been for a while, yeah, very clear on that. And, and, and if he's sending plumbers out to people's homes, they're going from home to home in the same fashion that, a, that the same manner in which a domiciliary care worker is. They're going from home to home and like the, you know, it's uh, it's just going to be, uh, it's just going to spread it. If there's carriers that are out there, they're going to spread it. So I think um, it's an interesting area of law that's being discussed. Um, I do recommend a policy that encourages staff in the meantime. And um, but with existing staff who've battled hard for their employers through very difficult times, telling them that they're at risk of being dismissed now when nothing's changed. They're wearing the PPE, they're doing or taking all the precautions, they're doing all the right things. That's a difficult one to to uh, to reconcile them. Uh, but there will be employers that will wish to take that decision. Well, as we always say, please take the right advice. Please do talk to Alistair and his team because he will put you on the right track. I don't think the situation is a one size fits all on this. Uh, Alistair, as always, very valuable advice. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, we Thank you, Ben. No Keep safe. My arm is fortnight later. I'm still a bit dead in my left arm, but um, it's uh, it's a good feeling all the same. <laughs> Fantastic. Roll on Stay the safe. second vaccine. Yeah. Stay safe. Cheers, Alistair. Thanks, Ben. Cheers.